Go to Role Players. This class is intended for experienced role players looking to join a Second Life Korean role play. It is written by myself. My name is Branwyn Emerald. There are three types of role players, four depending on how you look at it. In my experience, when someone self-proclaims as a role player, they mean one of a few things. I'm going to loosely and generally group the types. However, we all realize that rarely does one person fit into a particular type, and they have tried many things. With that said, this class is geared towards the experienced para role players for the most part. Sex. The typical sex role player is from a BDSM environment or sexual role play sims, where the bulk of the role play is about the lead up to erotic role play, which we often call ERP, and the detailed role play of online text based sex. Simple. The simple role player is one who comes from a generally relaxed role play sims, perhaps vampires or fairies, no offense to either. For the most part, these players are used to switching easily in and out of character post less than three lines, rarely have complex backstories or ongoing plot lines, and for the most part, play themselves as a different race. MMORPG or tabletop. Much like the simple role player whose role play is often broken up with OC chats, the average MMORPG or massive multiplayer online role playing game or tabletop role player is used to switching easily between the actions of the game and a bit of role play. They may have complex backstories and plot lines, however, but more often than not, those have developed in conjunction with the storylines of the game mechanics, which the player has then expanded upon. Para, chat, and forum. It is the para or forum role player that is most pure of the role players. This comes from locales that rarely have game mechanics, usually nothing more than diced, and almost all of their backstory, character, and plot lines are created solely with other role players. The para role player is one who posts in paragraphs. Forum role players may post in full stories. Chat role players, while often not paragraph role players, are however used to the process of their complete character development being based on interaction with other players in their fictional world. Second life role player, second life role player is most like that of the para chat and forum role players. These role players are familiar with terms such as metagaming, god moding. I see an OC separation and negative thought emotes. If you are not familiar with such terms, please take a class on roleplay at the Korean campus or online at www.portofironhall.com. Roleplay versus lifestyle. Before so many Koreans came to Second Life, there was a pretty firm divide between lifestyles and role players. Lifestyles, like BDSM lifestylers, took the core concept of gore to heart in their real life. They may have role played, they may not. My first experience in a lifestyle community was on IRC, and aside from sexy slave serves, there is very little role play. We played our roles but otherwise discussed anything from Earth politics to our favorite sports teams and television shows. The Korean role players prior to Second Life rarely associated with Korean lifestylers at the same time. They had their own chat rooms, forums, and groups where they played out the story of their Korean lives like any other paragraph role play group. There are a few other virtual chat rooms that popped up about the same time as Second Life, such as IMVU, but they were still more heavily lifestyle than roleplay. This was also true of Second Life when it began, and we saw the majority of the population become what I call 
lifestyle role players. It means that many of those, if not most of them, were lifestylers that also began to role play a great deal more in this wonderful visual environment that SL offers. There were a number of unusual expectations in the community at the time. They really did not like you to play more than one character in gore called alting. If you had a free woman character in Seba, then you only played a free woman in Seba. You did not make a new account to play a slave in Fina. Some sims would ban if they discovered you alting. There is a very strong dislike of anyone gender bending, that is, men playing women, or worse, women playing men. For a long time, if you were caught doing this, you would be ostracized by the Korean roleplay community. Some sims even went so far as to voice verify until SL put a stop to that. Everyone, including men, but most especially women, were expected to maintain their role if not the role play, while in I am. This included calling men master or women mistress an instant message. Sometimes this extended to an expectation of that role going into real life, causing a whole host of articles on internet safety. Forced collars were common. This meant if you went to a sim and you got collared there, you were expected to be part of that sim from then on. This might sound interesting, but many sims who had forced collaring had no players, and you could get stuck on a sim all by yourself. Why Koreans are bad role players. Based on the prior section, we begin to see two things. Why Koreans have such a bad reputation in the SL roleplay community, and how some very bad roleplay habits developed. I'm going to be honest here, my first experience in SL Gore was a nightmare. I had been on IRC Lifestyle Chats at the time for nearly five years off and on, and had read all the books, but I was out of practice and I was looking for a break from some other stress in my life. So I brought in a slave character and broke one of the rules I'm going to teach you here. I chose to play a barbarian. My goal was to learn what I needed to know as a slave in roleplay. I had a cute background, and I was all excited. I got captured by a wagon people group who had a first girl, who followed all the normal expectations of the time and dumped a pile of note cards on me. And I'm not talking about well-written, concise explanations of what was expected. Instead, I got a disastrous pile of disorganized crap. Quotes all over the place with no explanation, note cards and note cards and note cards with repeated information. As a fantasy game owner who had been writing and organizing player game and fiction wikis for over seven years at the time, I was appalled. And I did what any self-respecting role player would do. I ignored them and said, fuck it, I'll figure it out in role play. What a mistake that was. So what I learned about Koreans was that they were the worst role players I had ever met when it came to the expectations of fair play that I had become used to in my then 25 years of role play experience. They have absolutely no sense of ICOC separation. And when you're lucky enough to find someone who does have hard ICOC lines, <coughs> it's so hard you can't have an OC chat about the role play. They don't want to hear it. They god mode almost everyone, especially slaves. Men are in charge and are so much stronger than women that the men don't think twice about god moding a free woman or a slave because they assume that there was nothing the woman could do about it. It didn't occur to them the player might actually want to respond. God-moding often included sex. With men God-moding rape, including typing out the responses of the slave for them, with no pause or regard for the player's character. They metagamed like crazy. Nothing was safe OOC, 
everything was up for grabs to be brought into the role play. And the one that drove me insane was the negative thought emotes. Everyone thought it was perfectly acceptable to use their role play to thought insult anyone they didn't think was doing it right. Why are Goreans great role players? One of my favorite things about Gorean role players is they take what they get. Of all the role players I have played with, with my now 30 plus years of role playing, Goreans are the best at dealing with hardcore role play and not bitching. Oh, don't get me wrong, if you're a mod during a raid or something else that involves the GM combat, a lot of men are really sore losers and will nitpick every rule to get out of the consequences of the role play. This has some pros and cons. One of the other pros is that when players do not take the consequences for the role play, they are quickly alienated, either by the community or by the Sims admin themselves in some cases. This has caused the use of the term ICA equals ICC, or in-character actions equals in-character consequences. Unfortunately, the downside to this is that some very un things have gone on. Actions and consequences that go beyond what we might see in the books to outright torture and abusive roleplay. My first example of this is when I saw a free woman who was raped with the end of a bow. To highlight this even further, at the time, if you complained about these actions not being Gorean, you might very well get yourself alienated. So what about Gorean roleplay now? Probably sitting here going, why would anybody roleplay in Gore? Well, number one, six years later, the community as a whole is a whole lot better. Classes on role play are commonly taught. Role players are a great deal more experienced and do push back on bad role play matters. Two, there really is no other role play community of this size and this depth available anywhere else on the internet. Number three, it's dangerous. If you have been long enough in any role play community, you may, like me, be tired of knowing how every RP story will go. Tired of the safety, craving something dangerous, that thrill that goes through you when you wonder if you have the skills to get your ass out of the situation. GE versus by the book. I suppose I should mention GE or, or Gore Evolved as it's called. In and around 2011-2012, there came a pretty hard split between By the Book and Gore Evolved. The core of the split was around women fighting in raids. While I have many friends in GE and find GE to be amusing and fun to a visit, it's not, in my opinion, Garan. Consequently, I do not address it here, as I have absolutely no idea what is valid or invalid roleplay for those stims. Basics of case and role. Gore has four basic roles the free man, the free woman, the outlaw woman, and the slave. For the most part, free men rule gore. While there are examples of women rulers in the books of gore, they are exceptions. There are also examples of women leading and ruling in SL gore, but they have put in many long years into their role play to ascend to such a position. The free woman of gore is expected to be pampered and a protected creature, subordinate to free men of her homestone. Slaves in S.L. Gore are property. Slaves may be deeply cherished or easily dispatched. The outlaw woman is most commonly a panther girl who has run from society to the forest to live out their days as an outlaw. Most, but not all, of the cultures on Gore are case-based. That means you are a warrior, a scribe, a healer, a blacksmith, because this is what your father was. In some cases, you can change case, if the new case believes you have the skills to be accepted. Women may take the case of their companion or not. Just as they may take their husband's name or not, slaves have no case. 
There are five high cased, and by the book, people will only wear the color of their cased. However, even SL by the book gore is not that strict anymore. They don't require you only to wear your cased colors, but they love it if you do. They allow you to change cased via role play and sometimes with completion of OOC classes, depending on the city. It's important to know what your Sims case restrictions are. There is even a big pushback on the use or value of OC case classes at this time in SL Gore, but given that there are not enough players or the time for them to teach you everything in roleplay, it can be a great idea to go to OC classes and at least learn roleplay that they were part of your book learning. Slaves in Gore are property. They are not prostitutes and they're not slutty party girls. While Gorean slaves must do as the free command, it is important to remember that somebody owns them. Just as a man owns his dog, his car, his sword, or his cow, he owns his slave. And just because a car can technically be driven by anyone or a cow milked, doesn't change the fact that driving a car or milking a cow you do not own is a crime. The free and open use of slaves is at the wishes of the owner, not the slave. With that said, many slaves are delighted to get role play from the free, and they should get role play. Koreans traditionally did talk with slaves and prized them not only for their beauty, but their intelligence and talents. Slaves in Gore are just as likely to be role players and not lifestylers, just like you and I. If you wish to engage in ERP with a slave, ask an IM or read their profile. It can be hard for a new player to understand just from roleplay what a please fuck me is when it's just about the sexuality of all slaves. Most slaves will have it noted in their profile if they are restricted. Please note, while the Grand community is divided on the right of an owner to restrict their slave, this argument has little or no impact on you as a new Grian role roleplayer. It is better to respect the roleplay choices of the slave and his or her owner by default. Phew! Now we get to one of the hardest topics to explain to experienced role players. And I continue with the belief that not one of you is who is planning on playing a free woman is going to listen to me on this. There is no feminist movement in gore. Men and women are not equal. The bitch gets the collar. Slutty, provocative free women get enslaved. Arrogant, demanding, prudish women end up as slaves. The only thing that will keep you from losing your role as a free woman is maintaining a conservative, respectful, and elegant demeanor of dress and comportment. The Green series is replete with examples of snotty, bratty, arrogant, prudish, slutty free women going from their vaulted status as a free woman to a happy squirming slave. It is by these examples that we see how not to behave if we do not wish to play a slave. If you want to play a slave, make sure you are dressed from head to toe and veiled. Do not have any weapons on you other than a small dagger and or hairpins. Make sure your hair is up and off your neck. Be polite, not subservient, just cordial and respectful. Korean words and terms. One of the things you'll be taught at most Nudagore classes are basic Korean terms and words. For the most part, you can learn these as you go if you follow the basic details here. There are no canines or equines on gore, like on most medieval roleplay sims. Keep those two out of your roleplay. Most common animals have their own name. You will hear bosk, ver, tarn, and vulo, probably more than any other animal names. Very few players use the Gurian terms for second, minute, and hour. They're nice to learn, but don't freak out. Even less the Korean terms for weight, portions, or distance, so don't worry. The only Korean word you have to know is Tao, 
and its general greeting. Some people do not believe slaves should say tal, and thus you will hear greetings often. Don't use any other form of greeting until you are established in a sim and learn the variations of the different Korean subcultures. External knowledge. While many of the Korean cultures are based off similar earth cultures, and while many Koreans do look to those same earth college for cultures for extrapolations of their own Korean cultures, they are not the same. Someone familiar with Norse, Grecian, Roman, Native American, or even Mongolian cultures of earth must be careful about introducing such traditions into Korean role play. There are a number of Koreans who are very much against the use of anything that is not in the books of Gore. Additionally, there are 33 books at the time of this class and there are many exceptions to traditional earth cultures. Do not assume that because you know one, you will be fine using them in gore. Proceed with caution. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten into arguments with someone who knows Viking culture and seems to think they can slap it onto Torvald's land. It doesn't apply whole cloth. Background story. One of the most common background stories for new players in gore is to claim they are from Earth. And while that is a core plot line for Norman, it is way overdone in Second Life. Secondly, Korean role players have run out of patience in teaching new role players the language of gore. Third, translators are not as common as you may think. Fourth, it is a commonly held belief that the only thing barbarians, those from Earth, are good for is slavery. The second most common background is that you are an orphan. This is just as common in other roleplay communities, but SL Gore has a huge family roleplay foundation. It is much better to leave the names of your parents out of your initial roleplay and allow for the development of parents into your background as you make friends. And last, while there are many Koreans who are well beyond the natural human age, it is not going to go over well for you to roleplay that you are many hundreds of years old when you're a new character. Stick to a reasonable adult age. Attitude. Number one challenge I see most roleplayers hit is the attitude of their character when they arrive. Koreans, especially men, are a very prickly bunch. I see an OC. Do not choose a character that is arrogant, pushy, snotty, or snarky as your first introduction to gore. I can promise you it is not going to go over well. A respectful, mannered character of either gender is the name of the game if you don't want to constantly be getting IC and OC crap. As a matter of fact, most experienced Korean role players don't even play that role and have little patience for it even with well-played and experienced role players. The line is a fine one and takes an understanding of the individual Korean cultures to know where it is. Watch for a while, please. One of the things I see many experienced role players do in SL Gore is jump into the role play too quickly. Some of that may be because they have taken some time to look around and have hit a number of loose RP sims that are not particularly by the book and figure they can wing it. However, they get stuck very quickly when they go to a high traffic by the book sim. So first, I strongly suggest you visit the high traffic by the book sims first. You can find them by going into your search and getting to the places tab and typing in BTB. Do not use gore or you will get a ton of sims and stores that are not Korean roleplay sims. Sort the list by traffic with the highest traffic on top. These are the sims you want to visit. 
Go to any number of the top 10 sims, put on your observer tag, and spend some time hanging out watching the role play. If they have an open join or a visitors group, get into it. Let people know that you are new to gore and are trying to get a hang of the role play. Don't get discouraged if they tell you to go read the books, because while that's a very good idea, there is a lot of books to read, and you may end up reading one of the books that has nothing to do with the sim you settle on. Also, while that you're new to gore, players will be more patient in general. Now we come to the part that role players never like to hear. Don't go in having your profile littered with groups and pics that show lots of other types of roleplay sims. Koreans are snobs and many check profiles. If you appear as if you're looking for just your next roleplay fix in your profile, they are not going to be as enthused about spending their time teaching a new player who may appear as if they're going to quit at any time. All gore sims are the same universe. Early on in Second Life, most non Gorean roleplay sims were one universe, one sim. That meant you could play a different character on every different roleplay sim with no expected problems of crossover. With the introduction of Game of, sim Game of Thrones sims, we began to see more multi-sim universes. SL Gore has, from the beginning, been one universe that encompasses all of the Grian roleplay sims. That means you cannot play a free woman in Sias, a slave in Treve, and a two-chuck in R on the same account. Not only is this not going to fly, your reputation does follow you from sim to sim including many sims who cross ban. Be careful with your actions, and don't think just leaving the sim and starting over will solve the problem. Gore is a small and tight-knit community. Homestone. In conjunction with the fact that the majority of Korean roleplay sims encompass one metaverse, the Korean fiction does not allow for the changing of one's homestone. A homestone on Gore is a central facet of the roleplay. As a matter of fact, the name of the planet itself means homestone. A person in the Green universe is expected to swear to one and only one homestone in their entire fictional lives. While this is simply not feasible in SL Gore, given that Sims open and close, change ownership, and go up and down in popularity, Koreans to this day speak and think negatively of players who change sims too often. Loyalty to your sim in Homestone is an important part of building long-term respect in this community. Korean Meter If you are new to SL, you may be wondering where the game mechs are. Well, Second Life doesn't have sophisticated game mechs, and the ones in use by S.L. Gore are even more simplistic. At the time of this writing, 2005, the Gurian meter is still the predominant combat meter in the community, and GNS is the most popular crafting system in use by about half of the Gurian RP sims. Very few sims utilize dice for pure roleplay for combat. You should be prepared to know the meter if you are a man, and if and have it used on you if you are a woman. Going back to the attitude thing we have spoken about, Korean men will expect you to put your money where your mouth is with the Korean meter. Raid capture release. One of the things I've heard from new role players is the fear of raid and capture, so let me break it down. Number one, by the brick war, has very little raid and capture. The large sims engage in it more than the smaller sims, but unlike GE, it is not daily. Most role players will respect your request not to be captured. Many of them check profiles looking for players who do not have limits. The average time for being captured is about an hour when your own sim may come rescue. 
the outside's about three days. You should always have a limits pick in your profile that states at a minimum, keep it green. You can always call a mod, your own or the capture sim, to ask about something going on. You can always fade to black on anything you don't want to role play. And you can always choose if the action or the capture happened to some NPC other than your character. In the end, there isn't really much to worry about with a raid or capture. Just deal and wait for it to be over. If you're lucky, you'll get some really great role play. Respect privacy. It is worth mentioning that Garan role players really like their privacy. When you get to a new sim, even as an observer, don't go into private homes. It's worth noting that not all private homes are locked. If they are locked, do not lock pick your way in. If you cannot control your curiosity, you can cam inside the place and look around. But remember that what you may see going on behind private doors should never be brought into role play. There are many unique rules in the Gurian books about the acceptable actions for individuals in their private homes, and that should never be brought into role play. Secondly, most sim owners do not require players to be IC in their homes at all times. So keep this in mind when camming into private homes. Use of names in emote. This is probably a topic that most role players already know, but because it is such an issue in SL Gore, I'm going to cover it. Please use the other player's name in your post, especially when in a group of role players. You may hear that slaves are not allowed to use the name of the free, and that is true to the fiction. However, there should be no reason not to use the name in an emote, such as me looks to Master Bob, quote, Tal Master, end quote. This can go a long way towards getting your post acknowledged and helping others figure out whom is talking to whom. Additionally, most of the viewers have the ability to highlight posts based on terms or keywords. Set that up with your names, including your nicknames. It's a significant help. If someone misses your post, don't get upset. Or take it personally. Simply I am the person and paste your post to them so they know. The reality of the fiction. The amount of misinformation, onlineisms, and opinions in gore would take up more than this one class to teach. What you as new role players need to know is that about at least half of everything you are told is probably wrong. The other half of what you're told may be right, but may be utterly subjective to the context of the information from its source book. Don't believe what you're told by anyone, not even me, who is counted one of the experts of Torvald's Land. There is no player's handbook for gore, no real list of what is or is not right. At the end of the day, be prepared to face and deal with completely contractory role play on a whole host of topics. For some, this is frustrating because they're used to and expect that there's some sort of set canon that everyone in this metaverse plays by with the ability to say this is right and this is wrong. It's my opinion that even if we were able to ask John Norman to write such a thing, he would refuse for the entire point of the grand books is an experiment in social Darwinism. So be suspicious of hard answers or opinions and roll on with a role play. It's the variety of gore that makes it so much damn fun.